the people at Engard Body Armor sent over a bullet-resistant vest to review and put through its paces. This is the patrol model. This is actually a level 3A vest, which is the most protection you can get in totally soft body armor. If you want to go beyond that, you have to actually put in steel or ceramic plates. And this one is capable. It's got pockets in the front where you can slide in uh, steel or ceramic plates. But I was testing this as soft body armor because frankly, um, in the personal defense community or you know security personnel or whatever, by and large, the threat that we're going to face is from handguns, not really from long guns. And up to level 3A provides protection up to a 44 Magnum. So pretty serious protection. It will actually stop a 44 Magnum bullet. So I wore it. It's comfortable. I love that it's infinitely configurable. The Velcro on the straps here, the uh, side panels that actually the uh, protective bullet proof panels that go in here will actually wrap around the side so you've got full protection all the way around but that's not really you know what they sent it to me for i got it because i'm going to shoot it i'm going to blow it up i'm going to put it through the paces i'm going to find out what it really does and what kind of protection it really offers so in that context i'm showing you the good side because i also have the side that's been shot I wanted to find out if it meets its performance standards. So I took a huge assortment of guns out to test this with. I did everything from a 22 LR pistol up to, well, within the context of 357 Magnum, but I also <laughs> took some things out that it's not rated to stop because I wanted to push it to the point of failure. I wanted to see how far it would go. 22 LR from a handgun. Um, you know, I, I thought you have to test. Of course, the vest is supposed to be able to protect against that. And actually, of course, the vest did. But you have to test it because it's like, you know, the, the whole empire uh, doesn't consider a small one-man fighter to be any threat. Well, you know, what if a little bullet would slip through there? I want to find out. So 22s, no problem. 380, nothing to show for it. 9 millimeter, barely even noticed. I had some plastilina clay backing it up. And there's like a little bit of a mark where the nine millimeter hit, but really nothing of any significance. 38 special, didn't even notice it. Then we got to the FN57. Now, if you know the FN57, you know the history of this pistol, the, the Brady campaign has tried to ban it. They say that it's a cop killer. It's got these nasty looking little AR-15 looking bullets here that were supposed to just zip through vests like butter. So I shot five rounds of this at the vest, it didn't even care, didn't even notice. If there's any truth to the FN57 being able to go through bulletproof vests, it is not with uh, SS197 SR ammo because uh, I put five of them in here and there wasn't even really a mark on the clay on the other side. Uh, 40 Smith & Wesson has got up to a decently big size handgun with some Winchester white box. That left a bit of a mark, uh, about the size of a half dollar, a very mild indentation no big deal is another thing let me back up just a second about a bulletproof vest it's got two real jobs it has to do number one it's got to keep the bullet from getting through to the wearer and actually puncturing them so it has to stop the bullet but it, you also want it to dissipate the force because the blunt force trauma if it all hits in one section i mean a hard enough hit, even if it doesn't penetrate, it can still break bones, it can still do tremendous surface damage, and it may even do internal damage. So you want the vest to be able to dissipate blunt force. And I found even up to the 40 S and W, now I'm not a pathologist, I cannot give you medical advice, but I can say that I think based on what I saw, the vest is gonna handle that just fine. 45 ACP, <laughs> there is a pretty big dent. There's a pretty big dent. The 45 hit pretty hard. But as far as handguns go, even up to and including a 45 and a 357 Magnum, the vest performed perfectly. I found no flaws whatsoever. So then I thought, well, okay, we've tested the handguns, which is what the vest is designed for, and it passed with flying colors. Let's try some long guns. Even though, really, without the rifle plates, and I didn't have rifle plates, it's not designed to be tested or, or it's not meant to provide protection from rifles. But I'll go through some anyway. So I started with 22 long rifle, 18-inch uh, barrel. And I'll tell you what, 
With the Aguila Super Maximum and the uh, Sniper Subsonic, both of them left a dent, left a dent about a half inch deep. This was no joke. They hit, as far as blunt force trauma goes, they hit almost as hard as the 40 Smith & Wesson. So I know a lot of guys like to down talk the 22 LR, but you put that in a rifle barrel and it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Uh, then I tried a, a rifle that was a pistol caliber rifle. So I took a circuit judge out there and I load up with some Buffalo Bore 45 Colt. And that did a number. That, I got some respect for that. You got 200 grains of lead going 1,200 and roughly 40 feet per second. It put a hurting on the clay. It did not puncture the vest. It did not get through. But it left a huge divot. Huge divot. Over the golf ball size divot. I mean, literally, if you cut a golf ball in half and jam that into the clay, that's what it looked like. So I think you may be looking at some broken bones and some damage off that. But, again, that was a pretty substantial hit. So I thought, well, you know, if it's handling that, let's try some real substantial hits. 12 gauge with buckshot and with a slug. Now, a 12 gauge slug, I don't know many things that will stand up to a 12 gauge slug. But I do know one more now because this and guard vest, it took that 12 gauge slug and it left a massive hole in the back of the vest here where the where bullet resistant material ended up poking through but the bullet resistant material stopped it from getting through. So this was just a rip. There was no penetration. So this vest would protect you from being penetrated by a 12 gauge slug or by a 12 gauge buckshot round. I'm not gonna say you wouldn't be hurt because you'd be feeling some blunt force trauma out of that, but it did not get through. So did anything I test get through? Yes, of course. I, you know, the vest manufacturers don't want to show the vest being penetrated, but I wanted to push it as far as I could push it and find out what the limit was. Find out if it did everything it said it would and what it would take to get past protection like this. So I brought out the 454 Casul from the Raging Judge Magnum. And that was comedy, what it did. It zipped through the vest, it blasted entirely through the clay, blew the clay apart left a massive crater in the clay. Then it penetrated into the ballistic gel block that I had backing the vest and went about 10 or 11 inches into that. So the 454 Casul, uh, yeah, it's no soft body armor is gonna stop that. But to its credit, it stopped everything short of the 454 Casul. So it did very well. And then I thought I'd try a rifle round as well. Yeah, it left a tiny little hole in the vest because, you know, small caliber bullet. It did punch through the other side, and when I pulled the plate to look at it, you know, I've got a lot of wounds on the one side here, but when I look at what actually got through on this plate, only the 454 Casul. Everything else, it stopped. And when I went to the long guns, on the back plate here, you can see we had some big hits. This is where the pistol caliber round went that uh, 45 cold at 1200 and some odd feet per second this here was actually i don't know what this is but it left a piece of it in there there's a big piece of lead still embedded in the front of the vest in the back of the vest there is nothing except the tiny little hole right here where the 223 got or excuse me the 5.56 round got through so i've got some of the recovered bullets here that i've been looking at this here, I've got to think, was the 12 gauge slug. It's just a big, massive piece of lead, and it's totally flattened because that vest stopped it cold. Uh, we've got some little things here. This looks like it was probably a 9 millimeter. This here looks like the... <laughs> this is kind of funny. I have to show you this in close up. We've got this rounded mushroom up front, and then in back, you can actually see where the base of the bullet was. I mean, this thing actually shoved its base practically through its face. It hit so hard. But it got stopped cold. So I've got to say, in every way, everything I tested, everything I threw at it that it was supposed to handle, the Engard vest handled magnificently. Uh, I was very impressed with this product. 
if you are in the market for a ballistic vest, I would recommend you look at it. This, this is the patrol vest. They make others. They make more concealable ones. This is designed for security or law enforcement personnel. It's designed to be very lightweight. It's designed to be comfortable. I found it very respectable. It's not something you're going to conceal underneath a t-shirt. You know, it's, it's definitely more noticeable than that, but that's not what it's made for. It's made for people that are on patrol and I think it did very well. So I give this product two thumbs up. So thanks for watching. Appreciate you tuning in. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and head on over to The Truth About Guns. Uh, if you haven't been there, it's an extremely popular blog with lots and lots of news articles, commentary, and information coming all the time. It's updated constantly throughout the day. So take a look at what's going on over there.